This is a lesson on speed and velocity in the kinematics unit. Speed and velocity are very similar concepts in which that they quantify the rate at which a change in position changes. And this is a factor of time, right? The difference between them is speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. So you can have how fast something is going or you can have it be a vector quantity where you have the speed and the direction with it. Remember a vector is magnitude and direction. Velocity, when we talk about velocity, uh, we can look at the formal definitions. Often we will look at average velocity, which is the displacement divided by the elapsed time. And displacement is a very specific quantity re that we went over in a previous lesson. The distance between the initial position and the final position. It doesn't matter how you got between those two. We just care about the distance between those two and the direction. So the position, the final position vector minus the initial position vector divided by the time that happened, and that's the rate time. This is a vector quantity, and the SI units for it is meters per second. This is related to instantaneous velocity. Average velocity and instantaneous velocity are often not the same. If you drive to the store, you have a maximum speed and you probably stop sometime. You went in reverse to get out of the parking pot spot maybe. So instantaneous velocity changes through time. It's the velocity at a particular instant, which is different than the average velocity. If you go to the store and go back home, your average velocity was zero because your initial position and your final position was the same place, even though you traveled a distance. So average velocity, remember, is very specific in definition. The instantaneous velocity, if you know the position and calculus, if you know the position function as, t as a, a function of time and calculus, you could figure out the derivative of the position function and that would give you the velocity. It is the tangent line to the position graph and we're going to keep that in mind as we move forward towards kinematics. This may or may not be the same value as average velocity, and I had the example of this. Again, instantaneous velocity is a vector. Velocity is always a vector, which is different than speed, which we reserve that term for a scalar quantity. So when we talk about instantaneous speed, it's just the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. I was going 20 miles per hour. I was going 30 miles per hour, and that's how f speeds I was going when I went to the store. I didn't say which direction I was going. And so we can represent that with just absolute value sign. And when you see V without a vector over it in textbooks or on problems, that is representing speed. Velocity, velocity will always, always, always have a vector accent over it. So that's how those two are related. It's a scalar meters per second. The average speed is where the concept of distance traveled comes. It's different than average velocity. Average velocity just cares about where I started and where I ended. Average speed cares about what I did in between those two positions. So you would calculate the distance traveled and divide by time, which is a standard familiar way of calculating speed, and you may be aware of it. And I've summarized all this on this slide. The difference between the vectors up here these are the vector quantities, and notice velocity is both vectors. Speed is a scalar, and you can see how to calculate them. Often, we will use this equation, and we will use that equation. We're not going to worry too much about these. You may be asked about them, and if you're staying at algebra-based level, you will never be asked to find the derivative. Instantaneous velocity. You could look at a graph maybe, and say it's going five miles an hour at this point in the eastward direction, um, but you won't have to calculate it. Graphs of 1D motion. Oh, you may recognize this uh, position versus time graph from a previous video. Uh, we have time on the horizontal axis and position on the vertical one, and there's five different regions here, and we identify the 
points of the ends of the regions. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. 0, 0, 10, 5. This is 15, 5. Uh, 18, 20. And this one is 22, 4. 30, 4. And it says find the average velocity and speed for each region. So we have the equation for velocity and the equation for speed over here. And we have five different regions. So I am going to write out rows for the five different regions over here. And we'll calculate the speed and velocity for each of them. Okay, so we're set up good. Uh, delta x over delta t, remember that'll be final position minus initial position and then final time minus initial time. So V1 will be 5 minus 0 and this is similar to delta x my over delta delta y over delta x. 5 minus 0 over 10 minus 0. Well that's a plus 5 over 10 which is a 0 0.5 and the units are meters per second. The velocity, when I look at that, the velocity for region 1, well, it traveled 5 meters in 10 seconds, and the velocity for it is also going to be 0.5 meters per second. I'll leave this as just 0.5 meters per second. I will intentionally put a plus sign on this one so that it is recognized as a vector. Scalars don't need plus signs, but vectors will need an indication in which direction in the coordinate system is it. Um, velocity 2, you may already know the answer. Uh, it starts at 5 and it ends at 5 over those 5 seconds. So I have 0 meters per second for the velocity. And the speed also is 0 meters per second. We may even notice over in region 5 that it is also a flat line. So V5 is a vector 4 minus 4, 30 minus 22. Well, that's 0 meters per second. And so then V5, the speed in that region is also 0 meters per second. Let's work on the green and the purple in here. The green, let's see, V3. We go final minus initial, 20 minus 5 over 18 minus 15. 20 minus 5, 18 minus 15. Well, then I get 15 over 3, so that is 5. And I will put a plus in here, plus 5 meters per second. It's moving in the positive direction. And notice the slope of this line corresponds to the slope of the, the sign or the sign in front of this velocity. If I want the speed in here, all I care is that it went 15 meters in three seconds. And I also get five meters per second. Now you may be already be anticipating for region four that we have a negative slope. The displacement will be in the negative direction, which we expect. So we'll do that. V4 equals 4 minus 20, right? Final minus initial. 4 is the final. 20 is the initial. And then we have 22 minus 18. Well, we get negative 16 over 4. So that's negative 4 meters per second. That makes sense, like I said, because this line has a negative slope and I get a negative value here. When I think about the speed in here, all I care is that it went 16 meters in 4 seconds. I also get 4, but I don't care about the sign on it. That's the thing about speed. I know the magnitude, don't care about the direction. Let's just write it on there. So that's how I can read a graph, read those points, and find the velocity by finding the displacement between two points. I have a word problem next, helicopter blade. It says a helicopter blade spins at exactly 100 revolutions per minute. Its tip is five meters from the center of motion. And we can draw a picture for this. 
I'm going to draw a circle, circle-ish. Um, and, of course, there's some blades in here. I don't know exactly how many. I'm going to assume three. So I can write in here that the radius, there's the radius, r equals 5. And it's spinning around. Okay. It says, calculate the average speed of the blade tip in the helicopter's frame of reference. Okay, so um, speed has SI units of meters per second, and I'm given a speed here, revolutions per minute, but they want meters per second. So I'm going to have to think about how to convert this speed, how to get this speed into a, uh, meters per second rather than the revolutions per minute. And how I can think about that is to think about average speed. Average speed is the distance over the time, how far it traveled, the distance traveled, right? And I can put traveled here just to be explicit. The distance traveled over the time. Well, when I think about that point on one of the blades, right, it travels around 100 revolutions in one minute, okay? So I can write that. Time, one minute. Got it. Distance traveled. Well, one revolution, that's two pi radians, right? Uh, but what that tip really does is I want a linear distance, right? Two pi radians is an angular distance. I want a linear distance. And each revolution, that dot travels the circumference of a circle. So I'm going to write here the circumference of a circle. You may remember the circumference of a circle. 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. So each time the distance traveled is going to be 2 pi r, and it does that 100 times in one minute. So that will give me some numbers to put in here in order to find meters per second. Well, I can go 100 times 2 pi times 5. The radius is 5. And that would give me meters. And then I'm going to convert the minute to 60 seconds. So I get meters per second. And that's the dimensional analysis for this calculation. Distance traveled, 100 circumferences in 60 seconds. When you go through and calculate this, I will get 50, 52 meters per second when you run that through your calculator. You may already be anticipating the answer to the next question, which is the average velocity. When I think about the average velocity, I need a vector quantity, the change in displacement over the change in time. And I'm going to remember that the change in displacement is the final position minus the initial position over that change in time. Over one revolution, if I think about x final and x initial, if it starts here and it ends here, x final equals x initial, whatever it is. So the velocity over one revolution or 100 revolutions or 1,000 revolutions is going to be 0 meters per second because it appears that it didn't move anywhere. That's the difference between speed and velocity.